Hi guys, it's your science teacher here, back with another video, and this time I'm going to go through the whole topic of cells. So without further ado, let's get started with today's video. The topic of cells starts out by looking at microscopes and microscopes are really important in this topic because this is how we get to view all cells and cells are what make up all organisms that means plants and animals and without microscopes we would not be able to view all of these cells and know what cells were made out of. Now, microscopes were invented by a scientist by the name of Robert Hooke. And Robert Hooke looked at a cork underneath a magnifying glass. And he magnified it that much that he could start to see the cells that made up the wood. And it's now known that all organisms are made up of cells. Now, the microscopes that you have used in the labs, probably with your teacher, have looked a little bit different to the one that Robert Hooke used. That's because the one that Robert Hooke used was used a long, long time ago. His microscopes were used in the late 1600s. However, the microscope that you probably used in your laboratory at your school um, was a light microscope, which is shown just down here. Now, what we need to do is we need to know how these light microscopes work and how to set up our sample in order to view it underneath the microscope. Well, the first thing to look at on our microscope is what we look through. And this is called the eyepiece. Now, the eyepiece is the first tool of magnification. It usually has a magnification of around times 10. Now, the other tool of magnification is underneath, and this is called the objective lens. And the objective lens can be turned in order to alter the magnification. For example, there might be an objective lens here on times 4, and this one sticking out here might be at times 20. Now, it's really important when we are setting up our sample to start on the lowest um, objective lens. This is so that we don't break our slide when we turn our focusing knob, which is down here. Uh, if we are using the highest magnification, uh, sometimes we can break the slide and this obviously will ruin your sample. Now, your sample will sit on this platform, which is known as a stage. And when you turn the focusing knob, it moves the stage up and down. And underneath the stage on a light microscope is a light. And this just uh, provides a bit of light so you can see your cells underneath um, and through your eyepiece and underneath your objective lens. Also, using a light microscope, it's really easy to calculate the total magnification um, that you have done on your sample because the total magnification is equal to the eyepiece lens times by the objective lens. So, for example, if uh, this eyepiece lens is times 10 and we use the objective lens of times 4, the total magnification will be 10 times 4 and the magnification will be 40 times. Now we know how to use a microscope, we can start looking at different cells underneath our microscope. And there are two uh, generic cells that we need to know about. We need to know about our animal cells and we also need to know about our plant cells. Now you might first off notice that um, not just the colour is different about the cells or their shape. Um, but also some of the things that make them up. Plant cells are a little bit more complex than animal cells because they make their own food. So let's have a look at the different components. We call these organelles that make up both of these cells. First things first, I'm just going to name the different organelles that make up 
uh, both of them and then we're going to look at what each of them does so this thing in the center of my animal cell is called the nucleus going around the outside we have our cell membrane we also have our mitochondria and in the center we have our cytoplasm the cytoplasm kind of just contains all of the other organelles now in our plant cell we have some of the same organelles so we'll point them out too so let's just spot them in our plant cell we have our nucleus still we still have our cell membrane this time it's a little bit more on the inside though we also have our cytoplasm but we have a few more organelles we also have a vacuole we have a chloroplast Oh, and I missed out, didn't I? I missed out the mitochondria as well, which are just shown. Now, let's have a look at each organelle and what it actually does in the cell. So, let's start off with the nucleus. And the nucleus is what stores the cell's DNA. And because it stores the cell's DNA, it controls basically all the actions of that cell. Now, next, let's have a look at our cytoplasm, which was that jelly-like substance in the center. This is where all chemical reactions in the cell take place. Next, let's have a look at the mitochondria, and the mitochondria is the site of respiration. This is what gives our cell energy. Then we have our cell membrane, and the cell membrane acts a bit like a bouncer. It allows substances to enter and leave the cell. Now we're going to look at some of the organelles that are found just in plant cells. So I'll do them in a different colour. We have our vacuole. And the vacuole um, is what can store the products of photosynthesis. It usually contains sap. And it also makes uh, the plant cell a bit more rigid. We also have the chloroplast. And the chloroplast is perhaps the most important difference because this is how plants make their own food. It's the site of photosynthesis. And this is the difference really between plants and animal cells is the fact that plants make their own food and the chloroplast contain a pigment called chlorophyll which absorbs sunlight and they use that sunlight in order to uh, produce their own food which we call glucose and finally they also have a cell wall and this is what keeps these plant cells really rigid and the word rigid just means really quite strong. When thinking of plant and animal cells, it's important to remember that all plant and animal cells do not look the same. This is because of the fact that they need to be highly specialised to carry out the different roles in the body. So let's have a look at a few specialized cells found in animals. The first one we'll look at is over here, and this is a red blood cell. Now you might notice that the red blood cell is missing one of the key organelles. It is actually missing a nucleus. Now red blood cells do not carry a nucleus. The reason for this is so that they have more space in order to carry oxygen around the body. Red blood cells also have this donut shape and the reason why they have this donut shape is so that they have an incredibly large surface area and this just basically means that they can carry more oxygen as well. 
Looking over here, we have a sperm cell. And you might notice that a sperm cell is very different to that first original animal cell that we looked at. But it's important to remember the reason why we looked at that animal cell is because all animal cells are made up um, of them four key things, that mitochondria, um, cytoplasm, nucleus, and cell membrane. And this sperm cell does contain all of them still. Now, it also has a few little edit added extras, for example, this tail. And the reason why it has this tail is in order to swim around, sperm cells uh, need to swim in order to travel to egg cells um, for fertilization to take place. In addition to this, they also have an enzyme in their head. And the enzyme in their head is what is used um, to break down um, the wall of an egg cell in order for fertilization to happen as well. As well as this, sperm cells need to move a lot. So they contain extra mitochondria in order to have enough energy to complete that long journey to the egg. Finally, in the top right hand corner, I have a nerve cell. And the nerve cells are how electrical impulses travel around your body. For example, how your body can tell that you're cold. Um, nerves send that electrical signal to your brain and your brain can make an action from this. And nerve cells are adapted by having an incredibly large surface area um, so that they can touch as many other nerve cells as possible and they also conduct electricity this means that they let electricity pass through them really well and this is important because uh, signals trap pass through your body quicker um, electrically and the fact that nerve cells are great conductors means that it's easy for these signals to get to your brain and in order so you can make a response Now, it's important to remember that not only animal cells are specialized, um, but plant cells can be specialized as well. So let's have a look at one. Here we have a root hair cell. And the root hair cells are found on plants beneath the ground. And with the root hair cells, um, they collect the water for the plant and also the minerals that they need. Now, just looking at this root hair cell, you might notice that it's missing one organelle. It contains almost no chloroplast because of the fact that uh, no sunlight reaches underground. Um, this means that it doesn't photosynthesize, uh, but it does have some other key roles. For example, collecting the water. This is why it has such a large surface area. Because it has such a large surface area, it means it can spread out further. It means more water will absorb through, through a process called osmosis. In, and as well as this, it has a really large vacuole. And the large vacuole stores the products of photosynthesis and it can also store some water that absorbs in and some minerals that it collects as well. Now I said that things move in and out of your cell through your cell membrane, but what's this process called? Well, it's called diffusion. And diffusion is how particles move from a high to low concentration. Because it's moving from a high to low concentration, it does not require any energy. So let's have a look at what that looks like in real life uh, with our cell here. Well, our cells really want oxygen and the concentration of oxygen outside of the cell is greater. And this means that oxygen will move into my cell. Now, carbon dioxide, however, is really in high concentrations in our cells. And this is actually what we breathe out. So carbon dioxide moves out of my uh, cells and oxygen moves in. In a plant cell, the complete opposite happens because the plant cell wants that carbon dioxide 
and oxygen is actually a waste product of how it makes its food through photosynthesis. Now you can speed up diffusion a few ways. What you can do is you can increase the temperature, which is what I've done down here. You can see that uh, on the left, the temperature is much higher. And as a consequence, the particles move out faster. And this is just one way that I can increase the rate of diffusion. As well, I can increase the concentration gradient. That means that, for example, let's take the example of the cell over here. I could increase the amount of oxygen on the outside, and that will uh, increase the speed that it moves into my cell. And finally, I can increase the surface area. That's a word you've heard quite a bit today, isn't it? Um, and this can increase the rate uh, that particles diffuse because there is more touching of uh, the material with the outside and this is going to increase the rate of diffusion. The final bit of the topic looks at cells that exist on their own. These unicellular organisms are called prokaryotes and this includes bacteria. Now, if I look at my prokaryotic cell over here, it contains a few different organelles than what we've learned so far. Now, the key difference between a prokaryote and a multicellular um, cell is the fact that it doesn't contain a nucleus. It actually contains what's called a nucleoid. And this does contain DNA but it's not in a central location. It's kind of like a strand of DNA that's kind of uh, spread out. And if we look at this specific prokaryote, it also has a tail. And this means that it would be able to swim. Now, this specific prokaryote could need to swim because of the fact that it's found in water. For example, it could be a uh, type of algae and it also contains chloroplast here, meaning that it's making its own food. So it's likely to be some kind of algae. Now, all the other organelles that we see in the prokaryotic cell are exactly the same as what we have already encountered. So I'm not gonna go through them. And that kind of takes us to the end of today's video. So I hope you've really enjoyed listening to it and I hope you've learned a lot. Please remember if you did like the video to drop it a like and please subscribe to the channel.